Back in the early 90s, if you didn't have great graphics in your game, it was largely ignored. Oftentimes, if your game looked really good, chances are the gameplay wasn't exactly stellar. There are only very few examples of 16-bit games looking spectacular and having gameplay to match, when you consider the sheer number of titles published for this era. And Axelay is definitely one of those titles. Not only sporting some incredible Mode 7 effects for its time, it also shook things up by varying the gameplay from top-down to left-right, much like Life Force did on the NES, also published by Konami. It's clear that Konami really wanted to make a polished effort with this game. As a result, outside of its good looks and change in perspective, Axley also has a lot of features that separate it from the shmups of its time. Before starting your game, Axley has you choose from a selection of weapons. Although you can only choose the default weapon selection of each type on the outset, more weapons do become available as you clear stages. This allows for some progressive flexibility throughout the game, although I do tend to use the second default weapon the majority of the time. However, these weapons aren't just for kicking butt. Axley is able to survive enemy fire as long as it has one of these weapons equipped. Once the damage is done, the weapon will be out. If you're hit again, your ship is then destroyed. If you're comfortable with a particular weapon, a skilled player can actually switch out of that weapon before actually getting hit, thus keeping the weapon that you'll need throughout the game. This gives Axley quite a bit of a defensive twist, although if you hit any major debris or enemy ships, you're dead regardless. Even outside of the chances you get by losing your firepower, Axley is a pretty forgiving game. Unless you have the difficulty ramped up all the way to the maximum, it's a fairly easy game to beat. That makes Axley a great entry point for people to test the shoot 'em up waters. Additionally, it's pretty easy to get extra lives as well with a fairly low extent score. This also lends itself to the fairly easy challenge factor. It's not an especially long game either, so it's not going to take you forever to see the end credits. So with a solid presentation and gameplay, just how does Konami's Axley for the Super NES stack up? Let's take a look. Ever since I saw it in an old 1992 issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly, I made it my mission to play Axley at least once. Turns out, it's a pretty darn good game. The gameplay is pretty forgiving, so it doesn't do very much for the challenge, but that means that the control is spot on. Lengthwise, at only 6 stages, it's not exactly the longest shooter around. Its true strength lies within its visuals and sound though, taking full advantage of the Super NES in its early life. And in terms of ingenuity, Axley does all kinds of nifty things with its weapon selection system. It loses a point though because it feels an awful lot like Life Force. Not that it's a bad thing, it's just it's not quite as fresh as Life Force was back in the day. At about 10 bucks at auction, Axley is also extremely affordable. And since it's fairly common, it's not exactly hard to find either. When it all boils down to it, I definitely recommend Axley as an early example of shmups done right on the Super NES.